Hello and welcome. You're watching the Tov Jewish News Channel. My name is Michael Vilensky, and my guest today is Moshe Feiglin, the head of the Zaut, of the Identity Party. Moshe, great to have you. Great to have you, Michael. So, Moshe, my first question to you is about the new peace deal that you hear talks about uh, between Hamas and Israel. We, have, we, have, we hear a bit of talks, some, uh, something in the news, that Israel is talking to Hamas and the deal should look something like this. Israel stops the war for two months and in exchange for that Hamas releases all of the hostages that it now holds. All of the 136 hostages, if I'm correct, they'll be all released in exchange for two, mo uh, two months of ceasefire. What are your thoughts on this? Well, the first impression that came to my mind when you called it a peace deal was the Chamberlain peace deal, a peace, peace in our time that he waved to, the, to, the, to, his, to his people when he went, he went off his plane kind of coming back from the, the München Convention. Uh, uh, yeah, and we know what we got from that kind of peace, peace with the... With, with the with a murder, the, with the biggest murderer in the world, with with, with Hitler, uh, there's nothing, uh, no 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 peace with the uh, with people like uh, Sinwal and his movement. That that's first of all. The second thing that uh, I immediately thought of was the dramatic change uh, between the first part of the war when Israel. Uh, uh, conquered the northern part of Gaza, and the second part that started after uh, the first ceasefire. We knew that this ceasefire, the first one, the the the, the, the first uh, deal, uh, will change the war, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, uh, there's a big difference between the first stage and the second. Uh, the bottom line is, Michael, that we have to decide. We, the Israelis, have to decide. Do we want to win the war? Is this the, is this is the major? Is this is still the major uh, goal of that war, or we want to achieve other things? Other other targets, other uh, goals, other targets, okay? Like releasing the horse hostages, which is of course a a a a, a very good goal and something with, that we should think of all the time. But can we achieve both at the same time? The Israeli leadership telling us, yes, we're going to win the war and release the the hostages, and we're going to deal with the two things at the same time. This is a phony. This is a, a big lie. You cannot do both, definitely not at the same time. And if you don't do, and if you don't win the war, and, you, and if you don't focus all your energies and all your will, willpower and all your nat national sources on winning this bloody war, the end game will be that you will lose and you will not release the hostages. That's okay. going to be the end game. So I, we know that you're running for the post of the uh, Prime Minister of Israel in the next election, right? Uh, this is your, the goal of your party for the next uh, uh, electoral season. And one, one of the big problems Israel faces is Iran. How would you as Prime Minister of Israel, deal with that problem? First of all, we have to face reality. The, stra the, the strategy that Israel, or I have to be more specific here, Netanyahu, Netanyahu Netanyahu's governments, okay, through all these years of threats, over 20 years of threats. The strategic strategy that Netanyahu decided on, meaning a 
strategy of speeches, a speeches, speeching strategy, speech, speeches in the UN, speech, speeches everywhere, okay? Strategy of trying to make that problem an international problem, trying to make, make it a, a, a problem of, of the United States of America, Try, trying to use America as a economical, basically economical uh, a, a, a sanction force against uh, Iran and so on. In another word, strategy that was 180 degrees different than Menachem Begin strategy when he dealt with the same threat from Iraq, with a nuclear threat from Saddam Hussein, or even or even uh, uh, the 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 Eud Olmert when he bombed the Syrian nu nuclear reactor. When Netanyahu started going with that strategy, uh, it was obvious for me at least, and I said it for all, all through all these twenty years that this strategy will will lead to a disaster. And what we faced at the 7th of October was part of that disaster, because it's not only the question, will they have the bomb or not? Once the uh, Iran, over 20 years ago, started openly uh, uh, saying that they're going to destroy Israel, A question mark above the uh, uh, leg le legitimacy of of every Jew in the world to exist rise up again, just like when Hitler started to talk this way. It's not only what you do; it's 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 a war of legitimacy to to your to your very existence, existence to 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 to, to, to your right to exist. And Israel has to, had to act immediately to erase this question mark. Okay? And once Netanyahu did not do this, okay, all these speeches did not help. By the way, it was much easier then than today to deal with that. Because their, their reactors were, were open, uh, were cold, still cold. Uh, most of them were in one place, and many, many, many uh, other aspects, technical aspects. But the point is that instead of 20 years later, Israel is sitting on their fences, they sitting in our fences with all the proxy forces, including Hamas that attacked us at the 7th of October. So... The, the, these concepts, these concepts, and the people who pushed to this concept, mainly I'm talking about the, 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 the commander of, the, of the, the defense system in Israel, the IDF and the Mossad, should all go home, should all go home immediately, not waiting till the end of the war and to do some kind of uh, phony baloney uh, uh, investigation they have to go home now the, the 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 higher rank commanders and the politicians together okay. and if yeah. iran already has a nuclear bomb so which is a very you know probable situation that when when and if you'll be in power iran will be already in possession of a nuclear weapon how can, can how can we deal with that problem then you have to if if we we'll, if we we'll reach that that point, we will have to attack first. We're dealing here with a religious war, Michael. With a nuclear war. It's not like the cold. It's it's not the cold war between America and United States that somehow there's there, there's a kind of logic at the end of the game. We will have to attack them with a nuclear weapon. It doesn't matter how. We have to act. We cannot let let a situation like that remain. And if anybody thinks that we can we can lean on on the United States to save us for, for, for from such a threat, 
I suggest to remember how they beautifully saved us when all they needed to do is let one of these bombers who flew anyhow about above Auschwitz to lose one of his precious bombs on, on, on the gas chambers. They did not do it. Moshe, you know that uh, yesterday we tragically lost 24 soldiers, if I'm correct, in Gaza, which tragically fell when there was a detonation of uh, explosives they placed to clear an area to blow up buildings. And uh, unfortunately, 24 soldiers died. And, you know, this kind of raises the question of what are these soldiers dying for? What should be uh, done in Gaza after the war? And more specifically, what should be done with the Gazans who are now uh, in Gaza, right? So Israel, it, it will be very hard for Israel to control an area where you have 2 million Gazans. I know that some people say that there are less, some people say that there are uh, more, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, you have a big amount of citizens of Gaza that live there. What should we do with them? At the 8th of October, I gave an interview here in Arutz Tov, in Hebrew, and I explained exactly what needs to be done. And at the end of the interview, the interviewer asked me, don't you think that Netanyahu wished to win that war? Do you want to tell me that this war is just going to be another round, another sevev, as they call it, just with the same rules of all the of all what we got, as you know, all the little svavim rounds that we had before, tzukeitan, oferet yetzuka, and all these nice names that the computer gave you before. And I said the follow, and you can look at, at your arch archive, it's, not, it's just from three months ago, and you'll find it. I said Netanyahu is not looking to win that war, he is looking for a way out of it. And I said it at the 8th of, the 8th of October, no one believed me. What needed to be done then, and still need to be done now, and there is no other definition for a victory, is all those Arabs in Gaza should be out, gone. Even the ones who are ready to live under Jewish rule, under Israeli, you know, patronage? Oh, yes. Find me one. Find me one. A baby, oh, in, 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 a, 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 a baby in his mother's stomach is the Nukba terrorist and raper of another 15 years. What are you talking about? The minute you, 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 you said the goal is, is eliminate Hamas or something stupid like that, you lost the war. The, the enemy is the Arabs of Gaza, the people of Gaza. The Hamas is, the, is just the leadership that they voted for democratically with, the, with a huge majority. And if, if you kill Sinwar tomorrow morning, you'll have a different one. What does it matter? It's the, it's the extreme Isla <clears throat> Islamic Arabic ideology, and it doesn't matter if you call it Hamas, if you, go, if you call it the Palestinian Authority, if you call it the Jihad, if you, if you call it the rabbits of, the, of, 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 uh, of, of Thailand. This is what it is. That's the enemy. Face it. And we're not, going, we're not going into Gaza just because of the right for self-defense. Moshe, we're going to into Gaza. We're, we're, going, we're, going into, we're, we're fighting in Gaza because this is our land. And we'll keep on going in and out and in and out and killing our own children, fighting in and out and in, in and out until we'll understand it and conquer the, 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 the place and do with Gaza exactly what we did with Ashkelon and Ashdod and Ramat Aviv. There were no terrorists coming out of 
the the village of Majdal killing and raping and 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 slaughtering babies and putting babies and kids in ovens at the 7th of October you know why Michael because Majdal was captured the people of the the Arabs in Majdal were sent on their merry way and on 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 the ruins of Majdal we built a beautiful city named Ashkelon Moshe, we have same to move thing, on to our next same, interview same, with you. Same, same thing, same thing with Ashdod. Same thing with Ramat Aviv. The University of Tel Aviv sitting today on the ruins of a village named Sheikh Munis. And that's why no Arab attack came out of the 7th of October from Sheikh Munis killing the people and slaughtering the people of Tel Aviv. Moshe, and there's no other really definition because we have been, no oh, other, one other more definition interview with you. Of, 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 I understand, but I want the people who hears me to understand as well. These Arabs need there. There is not more than one, than one point two million Arabs in Gaza, and they and the only solution is that, like many 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 other places in the world, in our days too, they'll find their beautiful place in Turkey, in Europe, in any other tw 22 Arab countries, not on our land. This is our land and our land only. That's the only solution. Moshe Fegrin, thank you very much for this interview and for your insight thank you on the war. Michael. Thank you also to all of our viewers that saw this interview. Please don't forget to subscribe to us on all of our social media platforms. Thank you again. Have a great day.